Hello all, welcome back to our classes on disaster management and uh, today we will be discussing, we will be starting with fourth module, we will be discussing on soil degradation and uh, if you look at the contents of uh, the syllabus, uh, we can see it is about types of anthropogenic disaster, namely soil and soil degradation and desertification and in this video we will be covering soil and soil degradation. I will try to make this video as brief as possible. And uh, coming to the definition of the soil degradation, uh, uh, see one thing is sure that uh, even in, uh, if you ask the definition uh, to an upper primary level student, uh, definitely they will be having a, a fairly good understanding about the soil degradation. And so you all will be knowing about it, I don't need much explanation, but we will try to look at this from a disaster management point of view. And I will try to have a better perspective on this. And so it is a decline in soil quality which comes about due to aspects such as improper land use, agriculture and pasture and urban or industrial uh, processes. Um, it involves the decline of soil's physical, biological and chemical state. So soil loses its physical, biological and chemical some characteristics. So basically there is some uh, quality or characteristics expected from a soil. When that fails to meet that quality then we will consider it to have degraded. And excessive soil degradation thus gives rise to immediate or long term impacts which translate into serious global environmental headaches. It will manifest in different forms and uh, see one thing is sure that um, you know some you know uh, activity which takes place on the in this planet and will not be able to prevent uh, the soil degradation uh, completely but whereas we can only you know mitigate it to uh, uh, mitigate it from uh, going to some excessive level and uh, that is what we we can do uh, in the as engineers okay from uh, in, a, in a very uh, in a, as responsible professionals right now soil degradation may occur naturally it has been highly exuberated by anthropogenic activity so this statement is very very important like uh, now you might have had this doubt uh, when we started like uh, the, the quality of a soil could be affected uh, because of some natural phenomena like uh, earthquake or flood uh, etc like uh, why is it categorized under this anthropogenic activity or disaster it is because it predominantly it is because of uh, human involvement or human involved activities and the, that is the reason uh, we try to look at it from anthropogenic disaster point of view and the soil degradation example so the way how can you perceive this degradation uh, in a soil it is when it is when there is a decline in the soil's fertility and adverse changes in alkalinity, acidity and salinity. So these are, um, are essential aspects but if it uh, deviates beyond the permissible limit then it will have adverse effect. And then extreme flooding, there is a natural uh, hydrological cycle and, and that will have some minor effects on the soil but still uh, you know it may be recoverable or reversible whereas if it goes to an extreme level like extreme flooding and all like uh, how we have in the frequently I mean last two floods and all then that will have adverse effect and then uses of uh, toxic soil pollutants either as part of industrialization or as part of some research and development uh, projects or part of uh, you know due to unscientific disposal of uh, uh, various chemicals and other things you know it will result into the exposure of so toxic materials into the soil which again you know degrade the soil and then erosion deterioration of the soil uh, uh, and erosion and deterioration of the soil's structural condition, uh, different types of uh, erosive actions. Uh, now the causes of uh, degradation of soil are broadly you know, categorized under physical factors, biological factors, chemical factors, deforestation, misuse or excessive, excess use of fertilizers, industrial and mining activity, improper cultivation practices, urbanization, overgrazing. I am just reading it out as uh, you all and we will be uh, discussing in detail in the coming slides. Now the physical factor means uh, this photograph was taken. Um, um, uh, it, was a, uh, it was a massive landslide photograph uh, taken in 2018 
uh, this happened in Kerala. Now you can see how much uh, how how much the topsoil is disturbed. So the various uh, physical uh, factors such as rainfall, uh, excessive rainfall, then surface runoff or flood, then wind erosion, tillage. Tillage means ground preparation and uh, mass movement of the soil and uh, the, the weathering process. These all actually result in the loss of fertility or, or f fertile topsoil and thereby declining the soil's quantity, quality, contributing to the soil degradation. Now the physical factors means um, again uh, see the erosion uh, it, you know when we say erosion it need not be um, uh, always because of uh, water due to flood or water it could be because of uh, you know wind also in some places uh, on the planet the, the, uh, there will be excessive erosion because of wind wind action now coming to the biological factors so the biological factors refer to the human and plant activity uh, which tend to reduce the quality of the soil. So some bacteria and fungi overgrowth uh, in an area that can highly impact the microbial activity of the soil uh, through biochemical reactions which reduces the crop yield and the suitability of the soil productivity capacity. Similarly, the human activity such as poor farming practices may also deplete the soil nutrients thus diminishing soil fertility. So basically there is a it is actually an ecosystem, right? There is a balance uh, uh, between uh, various, uh, uh, you know, bacteria and organisms and all and uh, things like that. Now, if that ecosystem is disturbed, then it will have adverse effect. You can see. Then chemical factors again. Um, it is about the various nutrients which are available in the soil. Now, uh, you know that you know the soil. If you test, it will have some alkalinity and some soil will be acidic in nature but if it is within a permissible range then uh, it will be all right but if there is an uneven distribution due to any reason say because of water logging or due to any other reason then it will have uh, you know a cascade a, 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 a adverse effect on that so in broader sense it uh, comprises the alteration in soils chemical property that determine the nutrients availability so that is very important and it is mainly caused by the salt buildup and leaching of nutrients which corrupt the quality of the soil by creating undesirable changes in the essential soil chemical ingredients. Now you can read through uh, you know the, the content um, uh, we have already shared the um, PDF also and word file. Now. Uh, what is more important is, you know, see, as we discussed in the previous slide, we need uh, certain aspects, uh, certain nutrients and certain uh, characteristics, but uh, the, the correct balance of uh, this is very essential. And if there is any slight imbalance, then it will have a counterproductive effect. Now, in that photograph itself, we can see the uh, using the line to reduce the soil acidity and increase the productivity of the soil. Now, in some of the uh, uh, places, you know, uh, you know, certain type of soil will be acidic, more acidic in nature. So that can be reduced uh, by providing lime. Um, and similarly, if, if the soil is more alkaline in nature, then we can add some vinegar or some other material just to neutralize it. So soil acidification is a natural process which is accelerated by the agricultural activity. So essentially the inefficient use of nitrogen as well as followed by the export of alkalinity in produce. Produce means the cultivation. So, so we'll be providing uh, uh, fertilizers uh, in a very inefficient manner that can uh, result into more acidity in the soil and also the alkaline contents may be absorbed by the plants and uh, thereby leaving uh, more concentration of you know acidic uh, acidity on the soil and uh, similarly the alkalinity also like uh, the soil alkalinity or salinity is a condition that results from the accumulation of soluble salts in soil see one thing you know in in hydrological cycle what we can see uh, uh, you know, the, the water 
uh, you know there will be flood or there will be surface runoff and uh, movement of water and uh, and after that water will get evaporated leaving behind some soluble uh, contents and thereby there will be some redistribution of these uh, uh, nutrients and uh, you know this, this essential uh, this this uh, you know the ph value of uh, the, the soil will be altered frequently because of you know various reasons so and you know uh, the, the, the most of the alkaline soils are found in the desert environments throughout the world and usually they are found in low lying areas where evaporation concentrates the salts received from more elevated locations now the causes of soil degradation due to deforestation i think i need not um, read much this i we all know this and misuse of fertilizers i think this is very good oru oru vaak undu malayalathil then shastriyamaya reethil krishi cheyuga same way there is a scientific way of doing this scientific way of uh, uh, you know doing this uh, you know agricultural work now uh, uh scientific way of doing this agricultural work now you know excessive use and the misuse of this uh, pesticides and chemical fertilizers they kill the uh, organisms that uh, assist in binding the soil together now most agricultural practices involving the use of fertilizers and pesticides are uh, often entail misuse or excessive applications and thereby contributing to the killing of soils beneficial bacteria and other microorganisms and help in soil formation so th- the fir- there are some uh, uh, you know essential uh, so in some countries they take uh, some some policies in usage of certain fertilizers and chemicals right uh, so they some of the countries you know they'll be uh, you know having some aggressive uh, policies in uh, agriculture and they'll be uh, looking at uh, more yield from the uh, more crop yield and they're by adopting some scientific methods which will be you know eventually leading to some uh, adverse uh, uh, effects on the soil so that is one important aspect and now industrial and mining activities of course because oh, through this mining what we do is you know the 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 various types of uh, toxic materials which are present in the um, subsurface are brought on the surface and thereby uh, you know that will interfere with the the top soil and and will you know cause some toxic effects on the soil and similarly i can give you one uh, example of uh, you know industrialization where because in if you are a civil engineer then you will um, you know you will be familiar with uh, even otherwise i think you will be familiar with um, m sands and all some manufactured sand uh, recently it is gaining popularity uh, you know recently because um, it is able to replace the normal soil it is actually the quarry dust uh, available from mine itself quarry uh, granite mines now it is a good thing that you know we can replace uh, uh, soil with this quarry dust but the problem is this actually needs uh, some multiple washing before it is uh, before it can be used in construction purpose so in some places they will uh, do it in a very irrational manner and as a result this washed uh, uh, the, the water which is polluted water is actually made to um, uh, fly, f- made to fill over the Uh, land and uh, i mean some agricultural land and uh, that has actually eventually reduced the uh, fertility of the that 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 stretch of uh, spread of land and that was one uh, news which uh, came some couple of years back in in a tv channel so this kind of uh, unscientific way of you know doing something will have a serious impact on the nature now similarly the improper cultivation of cultivation practices because excessive use of uh, and irrational use of uh, these machinery can lead to um, mechanization can lead to serious um, um, degradation in the soil quality because if you use some sort of machines it will be uh, pulverizing and uh, it will be 
breaking it uh, the, the soil lump into finer particles and as a result uh, which will result uh, into uh, increased soil erosion rates now and uh, of course this urbanization urbanization means uh, again it is uh, we need to do it in a very um, uh, scientific manner because uh, this is very very uh, uh, important thing and essential thing now what usually happens is, is uh, when we have you know uh, urbanization or some the sort of development what we'll have is uh, more concreted surfaces and layers and as a result the soil will get more compacted and it will get more impermeable right as a result the water will not be able to in percolate into the ground vertically and it will have to it will have only uh, you know uh, uh, one way to escape that is actually the surface overflow and this is actually uh, resulting into this urban flooding and all and uh, uh, and all the you know uh, other side effects because of this urbanization and now overgrazing this is another uh, aspect like when um, um, when we have uh, some sort of imbalances in the uh, uh, vegetations when we allow some overgrazing uh, there'll be losses of some vegetation and as a, as a result um, uh, it will uh, result into which will result in accelerated soil erosion so therefore everything has to be in a balanced manner okay now thank you so much